recording. So we looked at 514 last time. Let's look at 519 this time. And uh, so if you have your book, please open it up to 519 and, and look at the problem statement. So this is to um, use classes. We're going to solve the cannonball problem, a variant of the cannonball problem that we looked at before. We're going to solve this variant using uh, object-oriented design. And the book gives us a lot of instructions on how to do this. So we don't need to um, do too much in the way of creative thinking. Maybe a, a little bit. It's mo mainly un trying to understand the, the terminology and the concepts and carrying out the, the author's instructions on this. So let's go ahead and create a new project, 519. And uh, let me start that up. Create a new project, 519. Uh, now the first thing we do here is, uh, at least in Visual Studio, well in, in Linux as well, in Mac too, is is this a graphics problem or a console problem? Could someone tell me that? What's that? <coughs> graphics? Okay. All right, so we got to carry out that those special procedures for that purpose. So for that type of problem, this is P5.19, right? Do I use a dot or an underline? I just can't remember now. I think I was using an underline. And um, so make it an empty project. And then I'm going to go in here and um, set the, um, turn this Unicode off. It's just for the author's libraries, by the way. Or, But now, you know what? I can't remember. I'm so absent-minded. It's actually true. Did I select console or did I select graphics? Don't tell me. I'm going to show you how I can check that for myself so that you can, you can do this procedure as well. All right. I'm so absent-minded, I can't remember what I did, which is true. I'm going to go into Properties. I'm going to go into this linker. I'm going to look at System. And there it is. There's the subsystem setting. Windows, subsystem Windows. Ah, it's a, it's a graphical window. We're making a graphical window. Oh, if it's we made a mistake and we needed a console application, then we would have just set it to this. See, it's a compiler setting. You know, the compiler is going to generate different kinds of code and accept different kinds of code in the compilation process based on this setting. All right, that's how you do that. You don't need to change set. What is this? All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and copy some files o over. So this is the solution from last time. Let's uh, add existing items. Actually, I think I forgot something. Is this everything? I forgot this rectangle class. That's all right. We're, we'll go ahead and build this again. So, um, well, just to see that it runs, let's go ahead and, and go all the way on that. Just to see that it runs, let's grab that rectangle class as well. I want to copy that. 
put it in there. Don't need that. So add existing item. Let's um, get that. So I think this should build. Let's try it. I want to set this as the startup project for convenience. It's not necessary, but let's do it. Then I can press uh, F7 to build everything in the pro in the solution. That's all the projects. Let's check and see if it builds. It builds, and then we'll run it. There's our rectangle uh, problem solved. You notice this has got a red underline. Once again, we saw that bug last time. It's Visual Studio is not giving us complete information here. All right, so uh, let's look at the problem. The problem, the book just tells us what to do, really. It says design a class called Cannonball that will model a cannonball. And then there's the rest of information. Oh, well, let's go right off the bat. Yeah, Ati? Do we need to have a default constructor for that? For the rectangle? Yeah, uh, default constructor for the rectangle. For the rectangle class? Did the book ask for a default constructor? Because we don't need one to make the code run. But if the, if the book asks for one, then put it in there. Well, that's my answer. If the book asks for it, put it in there. If the book doesn't ask for it, it works without it because we don't have one. So we do not need a default or no argument constructor. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and change this. I'm gonna I'm gonna rename the file actually. Let's call it Cannonball. You call it like that. I mean, it doesn't matter, but that's just to be very conformant here. Let's uh, let's call this uh, cannonball.h. So remember that the typical style is you you divide the, the the class declaration, you put it into a header file with a .h extension. That's the class declaration, and then you put the implementation of the functions in the .cpp file with the same name. And uh, so now these have been renamed. Let's go ahead and rename this. And, uh, but you know, all of this is um, not, not needed here. So we don't, we don't really know. I guess it asks for a plot, right? Does it have a if you go down here, it tells you what to do. It says the ball, the cannonball, has an x and a y position and an x and a y velocity. And you know, I don't like the word velocity there. It should be an x and y speed, right? But we'll call it, uh, I guess we can call it, I hate to call it velocity. So this is, a, say, a double, which is the x position, a double y position, a double, we'll call it, um, we'll say velocity in the, x in the x direction, like that. Velocity in the y direction. That's good. Let's, uh, that's easier to read, right? But just do velocity y like that. Let's make it easier to read. This is velocity x. We could do the same thing here as well. We can call it position x and um, position y. Maybe that's uh, trying to make it as clear as possible. So we, it's telling us to create a constructor with a weight and an x position, because, and the y position doesn't need to be specified because it should always be zero. So weight and x position, that's the constructor. So here's the cannonball constructor. We've got a weight, which will be a w. I mean a, a double, let's say, w. And, uh, and then the x position, which is also a double. 
which is we'll call it initial initial x and um, then a member function move and we pass in the number of seconds so it's, it looks a little differently than this it's telling us what to do here and then it explains how to implement it but we'll wait on that we're just going to get the declaration done first so we're going we're to create the code that it just kind of gives us the skeleton solution. Doesn't have the, the meat on the bones yet, just has the bones. Uh, so, so we'll start with declaring what the class is going to look like. What does the, the interface of the class look like? And then we'll implement the class later. And uh, there should be a plot function, and we have that. And then there's a shoot function. And I think that's going to be void. And it takes two arguments. The shoot function, what does it take? Angle and initial velocity. So it's the um, double angle and double initial velocity, which is really initial speed. I'm going to call it initial speed, just to be more precise. And uh, that's it. Use this class in a program that prompts the user for the starting angle and the initial velocity, and then call shoot. So everything is done inside shoot. So here it is. Let's. Uh, we're going to need to uh, include the cannonball. And uh, let's just uh, clear this out here. Actually, this will build. Let's see that. Nope, fatal error. What is the fatal error? Oh, rectangle. Okay, it doesn't build. Cannonball. And, uh, oh, all this stuff is, is wrong. I'll just get rid of all of that. So here's our cannonball.cpp. Let's build. So it builds. Because we only need to declare these functions. They're never invoked, so the compiler doesn't you know, because it doesn't have to do any linking. It doesn't need to link into a function. Uh, so it doesn't report a, um, a linkage error. But if we were to create a cannonball, then we would have a linkage error. Let's create a cannonball, call it ball. And uh, the ball has, uh, what was that again? You know what, instead of reading the book, let's look here. It has a weight and an initial x. So let's give it a weight of um, 100. But actually, weight is not used in the problem. And the initial uh, x position, the um, you know the, the 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 display goes through goes like this. So in the upper left corner, correct me if I'm wrong, is it minus 10 or minus 5? Oh, so that would be up, that would be 10. Oh, so x would be minus 10, y is, um, is positive 10. And then in the, in the upper right corner, <coughs> x is positive 10 and y is 10. And then in the, um, in the lower left corner, we have um, minus 10, minus 10. And the lower right-hand corner, it's 10, minus 10. Is that right, or is it minus 5, 5? It's 10, right? OK, so that's, that's, the, that's what the screen looks like. So we're going to start. The cannonball has a y value of 0, it said, which means it's going to start in the middle, right? 
Did I do this right? Does this start at minus 10 or does it start at 0? I think it's minus 10, right? Yeah. All right. So let's look at this. Um, let's give it a, a starting point of minus 9. So the x will be at minus 9. I'll start it over in this, the left hand. And I'll get at some positive angle so it shoots out across the screen like this. So we'll get an arc. Now if we try to build this, it will fail because we're trying to invoke the constructor, but we have not yet implemented the constructor. Let's look at the error. Build failed. Here it is. Fatal error. One unresolved external, and it says which one it is. This is the unresolved external. It, it's the, the, the compiler is saying, hey, I can't find this cannonball constructor that takes two doubles. You notice that it doesn't show, it doesn't go double weight, comma, double initial speed, because it doesn't care about those names. It just, what it cares about is I've got, I need a constructor that takes two doubles. And uh, we have not not yet provided one, so let's go ahead and provide one. And the other one was called initial speed up oh. X. They called it initial X. Now it'll build. Yeah, it works. Now this is called a stub because it doesn't do anything. We just uh, well program passes the uh, the arguments in there and we just discard them. So what we want to do is save those things. And uh, what I'm going to do is save them like this. Well, we have to save them into something. And uh, so I would like to use weight. And I would like to use, um, what is it, exposition, it was velocity Oh, sorry, that's initial x, that's position x. So position x is, um, is initial x. But here, that the name is a conflict, so I'm going to change this to w. It's not how I would really do it, how I would, I would do it in my own code, I would use, um, I would do this. Well, I'm not going to do that yet because I don't think the book has covered it yet, but it will cover it. Chapter 7, I believe. So, now, these are not defined. These are member variables that uh, we need to create. Oh, no, one of them is created. We just need the, um, the weight. Now, once again, it's, uh, we don't need the weight. There it is. Let's just check, see if it builds. Looks good. All right. Now, we've got a cannonball. I'm going to look at the last sentence in the book. Use this class in a program that prompts the user for the starting angle and the initial velocity. Then call shoot. The starting angle and initial velocity. So let's, uh, let's, we have to ask the user for the starting angle and the starting velocity. Well, we've got to declare variables to hold that data. There's the starting angle. And what do they call it? Initial velocity? And let's input these. So it's um, C in. to starting angle. C in to initial velocity. 
We need the header file for that, which is in um, IO stream. We don't need the CMath, <coughs> but I think we're going to need it in there. But I'll wait just to show you when that's needed. So we read these in. Let's see if we can build. Now I build at every opportunity. Good, that builds. But now the book that says prompt the user. Well, prompt the user means we're going to ask the user a question. So we need to uh, do that. Enter starting angle. And then um, enter initial velocity. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. That's not going to work. We're in a graphics window. We got to use the graphics version of this. Okay. How did we do that? We used C win, right? Get double. So we got to get a double. And then we pass in a string. That's one way to do it. We could use a point to tell it where to get it. So um, we pass in a string and it's uh, say uh, get starting angle or enter starting angle. Not sure what it looks like, but it'll look like um, We'll just start this way. This is the initial velocity. Oops. One failed. Syntax error. Oh. Enter starting angle, 45. Enter initial velocity, 100. All right, looks good. Maybe change it a little bit. Just put a just put a colon there. I think that'll work better. All right. After we do this, if you look in the book again, it has another sentence that says, then call shoot. So it's cannonball. And the book already got us ready for this. I think we called it ball. Call shoot. And we got to pass these things in there. We pass in the starting angle. We pass in the initial velocity. And that's it. Oh, linkage error. One unresolved external shoot is not implemented. Let's go ahead and implement that. So, actually, we need to call shoot. In fact, we need these other things too, right? But notice, you know, the solution that the book is guiding us to, we never, in from main, we never call plot and we never call move. The book is showing us one way to solve the problem. There's other ways to solve the problem. We could have main calling move and, and plot. We could put that logic in main, but that's not where the author was kind of guiding us. So plot and move are going to be called by shoot. So shoot is going to, you know, show, it's going to draw the position of the cannonball at every one-tenth of a second. So shoot will call plot move. The external internal function will call those two uh, 
So they don't need to be public. Nobody on the outside is going to call them. So let's go ahead and, and, and hide them away and, and show anyone who reads the code that these are internal functions. They're used internally, either by the constructor or by shoot. Well, in fact, it's only going to be called by shoot, but if you just stare at this, someone reading the code is going to say, oh, oh, plot and move are only called from internal code that's internal to the class. In other words, they're only going to be called by either the constructor or by shoot. So it gives, it gives the reader of the code more information. It also may help us catch logic errors. Like if some programmer is modifying the code, happens to call plot from the outside, you get a compilation error. So you can't call a private data member, uh, a private uh, function. So we say, oh, oh, I got, I'm, I'm misunderstanding the intention of the design. The intention of the original design was to hide those functions and call a different function from the outside. So that's the uh, how that works. So we need to implement this shoot. I'm going to, in fact, we've got to implement all of these. I'm going to copy those. And uh, let's go ahead and, and do it. And I want to talk about that const. It's not, it's not critical to, to, to have that knowledge at this moment, but I will, if we have time, talk about that. But let's wait, because that's a minor issue at this point. <coughs> now these are member functions. This is very easy to forget this. At this point, just because we put it in a file called cannibal.cpp, the compiler's not going to look at the name of the file and say, oh, that belongs in the cannibal class. It doesn't do that. We have to tell it by prefixing the names with the, um, with the class name to tell the compiler that these functions are being, that, the, that we're providing implementations for are members of the cannibal class. So let's go ahead and shoot. So when we shoot, what guidance does it give us? Somewhere in there it has some guidance on that. Oh, here it is, the last one. A member function shoot whose parameters are the angle alpha and the initial velocity. And uh, it calls move with, with a time interval of 0.1 seconds until the exposition is zero. Call plot after every move. So we're going to have a loop. So we're going to have a loop. And, and the loop is depends on what condition. Well, the position x is greater than or equal to zero. Well, that's true. We're going to advance the cannibal in time. And so what do we do? We need to create, we need to get, so at each 0.1 seconds, we need to move the cannonball forward. We need to modify the x position. We need to modify the y position and we need to modify the velocity in a downward direction. Velocity y. Do we need velocity x? Actually, the velocity in the, the, the uh, yeah, we do. We have to have both of these. We have to modify the velocity. First, we modify the position. Then we adjust the, uh, the velocity. Actually, the x velocity doesn't change, right? Just the vo y velocity. Yeah. No. No, we do this. We have to modify the, the velocities in the loop because the ball is subject to acceleration. So at each increment in the simulation, the velocity is going to be different. So X is unchanged, so 
Huh? But the x is unchangeable. The velocity in the x direction will be the same because its gravity is pulling in the in the minus y direction. So the acceleration is only in the y direction. There's no acceleration in the x direction. That comment? What is that? Because, uh, oh, not x. Oh, that's a mistake in the book, right? Oh, that's an error in the book. And Sean pointed this out with your aid and other people's aid, I think. I don't know who noticed it, but it was noticed. And this should be, in fact, a y, right? Yeah. So that's a mistake in the book. You can make that correction. So it's the height of the ball. So we're going to move the ball until it hits the ground again. We start at y equal. Now we want equal to zero because we're starting with y at zero. Oh, there's a big bug there. We never set y to zero. And uh, it's too bad I thought of that because it would have been an interesting debugging session. But I did happen to remember that uh, that position y is going to need to be set to zero initially. In other languages, an, un, an uninitialized variable will, will be set to a zero value, a natural zero. But in C++ and C, that doesn't happen. So if we don't explicitly initialize a variable, it will contain a random number. Or at least a number that we don't know, that we cannot predict. So let's go ahead and after we adjust the position and the velocity, we're going to call um, plot. Oh, no, wait a minute. This is all wrong. We have to call move, right? We need a, we need a member function called move. Sorry about that. So we need the member function called move. This is inside move. Do you see that? This is down here inside move, and we just call move. Actually, we're going to move it, uh, move it, you know, a, whatever distance it's going to move in 0.1 seconds. So it, instead of having a big loop with lots of logic in there, we, the author wants us to put that that sub logic in a function just to make this um, shoot function look easier to look at. So move is down here. Something didn't work there. All right, and then and then plot. Plot will be something like C win. You know the point, right? This will be position x, position y. So we're going to plot the ball, and then uh, and this move function is going to do whatever. Is that right? So we do this loop and we call move and then we call plot. Actually, this, this is not really good stub code. Do you know why? What if we ran it? If it builds, right? But if we run this, what's going to happen? Look at the loop. A comment that we stubbed out move, so move doesn't do anything. So y, position y will always remain equal to zero. So we have an infinite loop. Oh, I mean, we can test it, right? Let's go ahead and run it. See if it breaks the computer. Starting angle, 45. Initial velocity, 30. And there it is. It's, uh, look at this. Uh, the mouse, I can't click on the X. See, I put the mouse in there. And uh, I can click. But it is in fact, it's not even drawing to the window anymore. Do you see that? It's it's in the infinite loop. It's like we're we're keeping it from drawing 
to the window. So we're going to have to kill that. So it should be under debug, uh, stop debugging. There we go. All right, let's um, let's go ahead and advance these things. The position x is going to be position x plus some amount, but we don't know what it is yet. Let's just put it at one in there. And the same for y. Position y is going to be position y plus some amount. We don't know what it is yet. Let's make it one. And then. Uh, well, that's not going to work very well because we'll, we'll have an infinite loop there as well. The y is just getting bigger. And the velocity x is going to be velocity velocity x plus some change, say 0. And uh, same with velocity y. Velocity y is going to be where it is now, and then we're going to modify it a little bit, add a little. We can add a positive number, add a negative number. So now we have to figure this out. What are these little increments? And we could put the formula right here or we could say, well, we can do something like dx and then, you know, and then calculate dx out here. Whatever is clear, you know, what's the most clear to do? Which way do you want to do it? You want me to put the formula right there or say add a dx and then put the dx calculation outside? Which, what's a better way to head? These are the kind of decisions you make, right, when you're organizing your logic and solving a problem that involves automation, right? You want a dx or no dx? How many people want a dx? How many people do not want a dx? I'm going to do the dx. This is the dy, and this is the dx squared, the dxx. Is that right? Because it's acceleration. That's the change in velocity, so it's not the, ch I'm not going to add the delta, we want to add the delta velocity, so it's like, uh, maybe that's not dxx, it's uh, it's the second derivative, right? So that would be like d2x. Is that right? I, I don't really remember this stuff very well. Anybody have a suggestion? This is the delta, delta velocity x. Delta... Isn't that confusing? How about this? Delta velocity x delta velocity y and this would be this is the delta y this is the delta x and a delta y so delta means you're you're tiny because we're we're simulating so it's a small increment so let's go ahead and uh, de uh, define these this is delta x just set it to zero for now this is the delta y. This is the delta velocity x. Oop. We have 10 minutes to finish this problem. This is delta velocity y. That look all right? So that would be a no change state, right? So we're starting at this point. Let's let's go ahead and calculate this delta x. So we we talked about this before. We solved this problem of simulation before. So what we did was we take um, the amount that we're going to move is the seconds times the rate of change in the x direction, which is velocity x. And the, the, the change in y is going to be the velocity in the y direction, the speed in the y direction, times 
the number of seconds to move in that at that speed and then the now the velocities the velocity of x never changes so delta velocity of x is zero I mean, we can just leave it in there right but the delta velocity y is going to change it's going to be it's subject to gravity so it's going to be pulled down by amount minus was it 9.8 is that what it was minus 9.81 minus 9.81 times what seconds see the velocity is going to change that's the amount of velocity will change in sec seconds Let's see if it builds. We have a potential solution here. I think we're at the fi we're at the finished state, so we're going to see. Did we get it right or not? Let's see. Enter the starting angle, 45 degrees. Initial velocity, let's see, 40. Ah, didn't work. What happened? Is this? It's an infinite loop. Well, it's not an infinite loop. It just shows nothing. Is that the problem? Did I get this coordinate system wrong? This is the initial <coughs> x, right? So this is the... Oh, oh wait a minute. This is the cannonball. This is how we declared the cannonball, the weight and the initial x. This is weight and initial x. That's OK. This is the weight. This is the initial x. And uh, this, is the, this is the position x, position y. And the, the, the initial x is here, right? Minus 9. Did I get that wrong? What happens if I put in uh, 5? What's that? Oh, the angle! Ay, ay, ay. Ah, I totally forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. All right, running out of time here. We're going to do it, though. The problem is the um, we didn't initialize the velocity. The velocity is uninitialized. So we need to initialize the velocity. What's velocity x? It, it gives it to us, right? V cosine alpha. So it's the uh, initial speed. Whoops. It's done in shoot. So the initial speed, initial speed, that's the V times the cosine of alpha, which is angle. Oh, wait a minute. This is angle. We want angle in radians. And then, uh, and that'll be the same as uh, for the Y as well. It's the initial speed times is it minus sign. I'm just going to guess there's a minus sign there. What does it say there? No, it's just sine. It's not minus. Now we need to define radians. So double. Say it again. Very good. Thank you for noticing that. So we got to convert angles to radians. So we're going to multiply by pi over 180, 3.14159 divided by 180. Forty-five, forty. 
We're getting there. You know what? I don't like setting the, the Y position to zero. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think we should put the... Um, Although what we could do is we could, when we plot, we could move everything down by 10. Let's just do that. We'll move everything down by 9. So 45 and 40. Starts to look, look a little better. Let's run it again. This is um, 87 and 60. Well, it's too fast, right? Let's look at um, let's look at 86 and uh, and 30. It's starting to look a little better. We could just so we can see it. Let's try um, let's try 85 and 12. There we go. There's our there's our cannonball simulation. Let's try. Um, Let's try 85 and uh, and um, and 19. That's it. That's finished. Three minutes to go. We just made it. Any questions that I can answer in three minutes? Okay. That's it. We'll see you in lab. I will post this solution on uh, YouTube. <laughs>